Hi, I'm Mike Thompson. We're still talking about how to build the fastest cardboard boat. In this video, we're going to talk a little bit about how to calculate your center of buoyancy and as a result, uh, your draft. The both, go both of them go hand in hand because you have to know your draft to know what your weighted area is going to be, what your uh, center of gravity, where it's going to be in relation to the water, and where your center of buoyancy is going to be and all that. So this is really important. If you're not just making a basic box shape, uh, rectangular prism, and you have some sort of slope somewhere touching the water, this is definitely the video that you're going to want to watch, because this is where the math starts to get kind of tricky. I've got just a three-sided uh, trapezoid. In this case, let's say length uh, equals, I don't know, 48 inches. Just to make something up. Okay? So, we're not concerned with that right now. Um, because what we're going to have to do is find the area of our uh, section here. Because we, we know what we have to displace. We're still trying to displace 150 pounds. But the question is, well gosh, how far down in the water is my boat going to sink? That's the draft. We know how to find the area of a trapezoid. It's the average of the two bases times the height. Well, obviously it's not the entire height of the boat. Hopefully, otherwise the water is going to be right there at the top. The water line is going to be somewhere in this area. Problem is, we don't know what the width of this base is. We know this base. This base is 36. We don't know our height because that's dependent upon the weight, which we do know, which is good. But we can't find the area of our, tra of our trapezoid because we don't know how wide this base is. So, we have to kind of back things up. I'm going to show you how we work this problem here. What I'm going to do is break this up. On the off chance you don't have a trapezoid and you just have maybe a slope uh, on your bow or your stern or somewhere else, we're going to break this up into three different segments. And we're going to do the hard ones because the middle section is easy. So, we use basic geometry here. What we got to do is figure out what the slope of this wall is. Well, we know that this is 36, this whole width is 60, we know that our rise here is 24. Now ordinarily, slope is calculated rise over run. Well in this case, our dependent variable and independent variables are flipped. So in this case, it's run over rise, which is kind of backwards. And the first time I built a boat like this, let me tell you, that tripped me up an awful lot. So, knowing all this, we know this segment here is 12, which also makes this segment here 12. So our independent variable in this case is our depth. Because this is what's going to vary. We need to solve for this. But we need an equation for how this base here varies with depth. Well, it's not super difficult. You know that the absolute minimum width base is going to be 36. So I'll write the equation over here. We've got 36 plus something. Well, the slope of this, like I said, it's run over rise. Run, in this case, is the x, which is 12, over 24, which is 1 half. So that's pretty cool. That's a nice round number. I occasionally come up with something that's a little bit different. <laughs> so 36 plus 1 half, but now, well, plus half of what? Well, plus half of our depth. And we can check it by doing this. Uh, let's say we're going to, if we're going to take it all the way to the top, we know then that D is 24, okay? So if we solve for D equals 24, that's 36 plus 12, because that's half of 24, and that should get, uh-oh, there's two triangles here, so we have to make sure to multiply by 2. In which case, all we do is just simply take out the half, and that has the effect of multiplying by 2. So, 36 plus D is our width. And now we should definitely check that as well. 36 plus D, if we let D equal 24, 36 plus 24 gets us back to 60. If D is 0, it's 36. So, what we know now is 36 plus D equals base 1. We'll call it that. 
And remember, the area of a trapezoid is base 1 plus base 2, half of all that. It's just the average of the bases times your height, or our depth in this case, which is our draft. So, now that we know this, we'll be able to calculate what our depth should be. Let's go ahead and do that. We know that the boat is going to be 48 inches long. It's just a, this time it's going to be a trapezoidal tub. It's not going to have pointed ends or anything like that. I'm just showing you how, this was the trickiest part when I first started building boats a couple of years ago. Figuring out how all this worked, but it's really just simple math. So don't fret about it too much, but you definitely need to do it because it does matter. So if we know we need to displace 150 pounds, you remember, if you've seen the other videos, that that's 2.4 cubic feet. Okay, great. We know that the length of our, we'll call it the, the pilot house, the cockpit, whatever, we know the length of that's 48 inches, which is 4 feet. So we need to find an area. So let's divide our volume, 2.4, divided by 4 feet. So we need an area of 0.6. 0 0.6 square feet. Okay, we know this is area, our equation over here. One half of the base one plus base two times our depth. We know that this equation has to equal 0.6. So we can solve for all this. One, one half base one is going to be 36. Up, up, up. I just about got tripped. This 0.6 is in square feet. This 36 is in inches. We need to convert everything to be the same. That's 3 feet. We want to do everything in feet at the moment. 3 plus base 2, which we don't know yet, times D. What we have to do, obviously, is get base 2 in terms of base 1. That's why we did that whole slope thing over there. So, base 2, actually, we're going to, since I did my equation that way, that's going to be base 2. This is going to be base 1. This is going to be base 2. We take this equation and plug it in here for base 2. So, this expands again to 1 half, 3 feet, plus 36 inches, convert back to feet so that everything's the same plus 3 plus D, take this, stick it in here, for base 2 times D. Now we can go through and simplify this and everything, but I'm not going to do that right now. But you can see what we've done is we've got everything now in terms of D, which is our independent variable in this case. So all we have to do is back everything out, flip our equation around, and solve for D to figure out what it's going to be. Okay, so we get all this worked out here, and we get 0.1937 feet. Well, what is that? Well, I'll tell you what it is. 0.1937 times 12. Two and a third inches. So your water line in that case is going to be, well, probably about right there. And what this tells us is, you've drastically overbuilt your boat. You have no reason to build something that's 24 inches high when you're only going to be drawing 2 inches of water, given these dimensions. So you might as well go ahead and shrink your wall or do something else and rerun this whole thing. But now you see kind of how we set this up. Let's make it uh, a little bit more interesting. We'll do another one real quick. Let's say instead of 150 pounds, which is a ridiculously light amount of weight for a boat this size, let's say you want to pack all your friends in and you've got 750 pounds. Well, we do the same kind of thing. Water is 62.4 pounds per cubic foot, so we need to displace 12 cubic feet. Uh, we know all this. Our length of our boat coming out from the board is 4 feet, so we know that we need an area of 3 feet, because it's 12 divided by our length, converted back to feet, which is 4. 12 divided by 4 is 3 square feet. So we come back over to this side. Instead of 0.6 here, we plug in 3. We work all that through again, solve for it and we get a result of 10 and a half inches, which is 0.8 something feet. So, if we're drawing 10 and a half inches there, 
That's that line's actually about where it should be already. Uh, you still overbuilt your boat. My goodness. So change something because now you're going to have a wall that's 12 inches over your water line. Now that may be where you're comfortable having it. That way people have to reach down a foot. Really, that's not that far. But if you're really trying to go, you know, for the optimal design, you want to get it, uh, get the top of your deck as close to the water line as you can because uh, freeboard is what it's called. Freeboard is from the water line to the top of your deck. You want to minimize the freeboard because, well, you minimize material and weight. So, so now that we know where our water line is, what our draft is going to be, we can calculate the centroid of our trapezoidal area that's under the water that the boat displaces. This is going to tell us where our center of buoyancy is going to be so that we can then calculate the stability of our boat and make any changes as necessary. I hope this kind of helps explain things a little bit, but thanks for watching. I really appreciate it.